you were part of those great Mets teams from the turn of the century and so many other teams. You debuted in 1997, which was like prime Scott Rogowski baseball card, baseball fandom. I mean, it was I was peaking. Your Bowman rookie card, I'm a proud owner of it. I got your 96 best auto card. How many of those did you sign, those auto cards? A bunch, yeah, a bunch of those. That was good. <laughs> That was, the, that was the only way you could make money when you're in the minor leagues at that point in time, yeah. Right? So I, I, I was a big Glendon Rush collector. And look, when you when you debuted, uh, you were a sensation, man. I mean, you were first of all, you were among one of the youngest players on that Royals team as a 22-year-old in 97. You know, to get that opportunity as a real youngster, especially kind of um, – that was a, a an era of tons of – old time veteran guys still around and, and hall of famers and getting to see, you know, Cal Ripken and Eddie Murray and all these guys that were still playing at the time was pretty awesome. Right. Because when you have that generational gap being 22, you grew up watching these guys play on TV. And it's one of those surreal moments when you're now in the game with them pitching against them. Who was that first guy that you faced where you're like, Holy crap, I'm, I'm in the major leagues and I'm facing one of my childhood heroes. Uh, probably Paul Molitor. He was in the lineup um, in my debut against the Twins. So, th yeah, that was definitely a, a double tape looking in at him and, and seeing him in the box. And then, of course, you know, being a Seattle guy, growing up watching Griffey and Randy Johnson and Buner and that whole crew, Edgar. Um, so facing Griffey and those guys in the kingdom for the first time was, was pretty amazing. You overlapped on that 97 team with the wild thing, Mitch Williams. Yeah. I need to hear about Mitch coming out of retirement, attempting a comeback, didn't quite work out. Absolutely phenomenal dude. So much fun. I mean, we had a blast in spring training. Um, I actually got to play some golf with him a couple times. You know, he was great to us young guys and, and uh, you know, made the team and then and then kind of had some struggles earlier in the year and, and uh, we ended up letting him go. But, man, it was it was for me as being – you know, I, I look at baseball like you did, man. I collected baseball cards, and I was a part of all that that hoopla and, and, and watching games and everything. So as a fan and getting to be a teammate with Mitch Williams was uh, unbelievable. Your Twitter picture is Kenny Powers photoshopped into a Glendon Rush baseball card. Kenny seemed to have some of that wild thing flared him. I think uh, there's speculation that he was based on Mitch Williams to some degree. Yeah, it's probably not far off. Yeah, Kenny P is my favorite. I love that show. And uh, I have a buddy back in L.A. who's an incredible artist, and, and he does all these baseball cards where he puts funny heads on them. And, of course, he did a Kenny Powers one for me. So that was a, a good gift. It's a fantastic show. Are you merely a fan of the show and the character, or do you see some of yourself in the Shelby sensation? No, you know what? I wish I had uh, some more of his traits. Like, I wish I had a little more of that FU attitude when I was uh, when I was rolling through the league. It might have helped me uh, get a few more guys out. No jet skis. <laughs> no jet skis. <laughs> Today is Bobby Valentine's birthday. I saw you uh, retweeted that, and you're talking about him. 70th birthday, right? Wow. Yeah, uh, yeah. We uh, we spent we spent uh, we had a, a call this morning with uh, Howie Rose, myself. Bobby V and Todd Zeal kind of reminiscing about some of the, the 2000 stuff since it's the 20th anniversary. So it was great to catch up with those guys. That's right. And yeah, Bobby was your manager. And I actually found a clip of him speaking at a dinner on YouTube where I guess he was asked, of all the pitchers he managed, he was the gutsiest in big time situations. And of all the pitchers that Bobby V has managed, and there have been many, he said, I had that left hander who couldn't, who had nothing, and I thought he did a great job when we went to the World Series. Uh, he had grit. His name is Glendon Rush. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I love that. I love Bobby, and uh, and and uh, we had a great relationship, and and you know he treated me uh, very well, helped me find a place to live up in Stanford, Connecticut, and and uh, yeah, he was he was awesome. It was great to catch up with him today. Oh, you lived up in Stanford when you were pitching? I did. I lived there both I, both years. I played in New York. I lived up there. Very cool. Did you go to his uh, bars that he owned? Oh yeah, yeah. I was. I think I probably have uh, tendonitis still from my elbow from the Papa Shot game there at, at uh, Bobby V's. That's I crushed right. That, I crushed that thing. He's the mayor of Stanford, practically. But what is it about those big game situations? Because look, going back to that major league debut, 22 years old, he pitched eight innings, no earned runs. I mean, lights out. And then in, in the World Series, biggest stage, Yankees, Mets. I definitely felt like I I zoned in well when when uh, big games were on the line and and but, you know the playoffs were, honestly were a blur. I mean that was my first time in the playoffs. I was a pretty young guy, 
I just went out there and competed and, and was ready to take the ball every day and in a different role. I'd never really been a reliever before. I was always a starter. So to get get uh, thrown down in the pen, man, I was ready to go. It was so much fun and, and the excitement and the city was buzzing. And it was it was awesome. Isolate Night with Scott Rogowski, live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern.